Well, it's with great joy to introduce my precious mom, such an extraordinary, powerful, anointed woman of God that I know lives what she preaches. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and this precious lady prayed me through. I grew up in a Christian home, but like a lot of us, we go astray. For some reason, the attraction of the world gets to the best of us. So I thought I'd get out there and experience the things of the world. But through my experience of the world, I had a praying mom. I had a praying mom that prayed for me for every day. For 10 years, she did not fail one day in praying. I remember coming home on several occasions, and I was like, I, I would, who was she in there praying for? Lo and behold, I learned later it was me. <laughs> I said, she's always praying when I come over, amen. But lo and behold, she was praying for me. Amen. And so this woman is just an awesome, wonderful, successful businesswoman for you that don't know. She's a successful businesswoman. She was regional um, director of Stanley Home Products for a number of years over the region. I, she was like the number two lady in the region Amen. because of her commitment and her dedication to the company. And so that speaks volumes for who she is. She's an awesome leader. She loves the Lord. She is committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. At her home church back in the day, I remember my mom being someone who was special. I never will forget when they crowned her queen for her day. Oh, she was beautiful then as she is now. As she sat there in, on that chair and they crowned my mom as acknowledging her. Not only was she queen for the day, but my mom was so committed to cancer patients that she drove cancer patients free of charge for their treatment every wow. single day. Wasn't wow. that something? Yeah. Amen. She's committed for many times to make an impact. She has a love in her heart for people. In the neighborhood, she, she's known as the woman that sunshine, because that's just the way she is in the neighborhood. Everyone see her as light. They call her sunshine. Amen. And some people just are just amazed at how awesome she is and how extraordinary she is and the difference she has made in our community there in Detroit. For you that don't know, she taught Bible study with the young people and taught them the Word of God. She's committed to sharing the gospel. She's committed to the gospel, and she loves the gospel. Amen. And so we are so privileged to have, and it is my honor to introduce my wonderful mom, who I know is a person of the Word of God that preaches or teaches, I should say, or ministers the Word of God. And just look how beautiful she is, and God shines upon her. And I say to her today, we love you at Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte, and we're honored to have you as our guest speaker tonight. Why don't you help me welcome tonight my wonderful mom, Annie Walker, to Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte. said about me, and I thank you for it. Uh, I wonder where will I go from here. <laughs> but knowing Almighty God, it seems though that God speaks one word, and the word that he has spoken to us today was a word that he had given me before I entered into the building this morning. So I would just pick up where we left off this morning because God never left us. That's right. He stayed with us and he stayed within us 
And those of you that went away and came back, he still was with you. And you brought him back with you. So it's just wonderful to know that he is still all present. And we still have the same spirit that he left us with. That we thought he left us with, but he didn't. And so when I went into the other room in there, he was in there. So he's been with us all day. Yes. And the point is, is that it's so good because he's really been us all, been with us all the time. Right. And some of us younger than others, some of us older, but he's still been us from the time that we were born in the world. Isn't that something? Sure. Yeah. And he will remain with us. Mm -hmm. And so as we live, the point is, is that we're so wonderful that he never leaves us. We may leave him. But he never leaves us. That's right. And isn't that very good? That is. So right now, I'm going to mention what he has instilled in me to talk about. is salvation. Mm -hmm. And I never, I really don't understand it because I know that all of us are saved. But yet I have to talk to you about salvation. The number one thing is uh, being saved. There may be some times that because we may not come measure up to what we think we are and what God's word said we are, then we feel that we are backslid, uh, not being worthy of what God did for us, that sending his son Jesus. So therefore, we'll feel like, well, I know that uh, I've lost my salvation. But that you can always be assured of. <coughs> that you may go away, you may stray away some, just like my son said he did, but he was never lost. And that's the good part. He was never lost. I talked to God about it. God talked to me about it. He was never lost. But he had to realize that he wasn't lost, that he had to come home, that he had to come back home. And we remember the story of the prodigal son. All the things he did, but he was never lost. He returned, and his father was there waiting for him. And that's the way that our God is. He's always with us. He's waiting for us if we leave or we stumble. He still waits because he knows we're coming back. <laughs> and we must return back to him because that's where we belong. Um, the first thing that we know about as far as our salvation is the number one thing is love. Mm -hmm. And we will take it from the first Corinthians thirteen. Most of us know that is the love chapter. Mm -hmm. And being short of my glasses and uh, I may not apologize for not reading the whole scripture. But it it speaks about it starts out though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love. I mean, the prophets do not. So that means that love is the number one thing. Amen. What is the number one thing with God? It's love. And that's what we look to him for, is love. When we feel all alone and no one is around, there are many times maybe we wake up in the midnight hour, but we know God is awake and he hears us. He hears our cry. He hears our every groan. He laughs with us. He has a sense of humor. So he loves us so much. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, well, is salvation. Some of us, we know we have been saved, and we backslide, or we do some things maybe we shouldn't. And we feel like, oh my God, I lost my salvation. That's impossible. You know, God is always there. And I'm going to talk to you about maybe three or four things. Oh, the mic. I you know I always had a problem with the mic. Me too. And um, <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I really do. But anyways, I, I always thought I could talk loud enough without using the mic. But anyway, we start out with love. And we know what love is. Or do we? Yes. Do we really know what love is? Yes. Love is something that you don't turn off and on. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, and, and there's several kinds of love, you know. And so when we are little kids, you know, we love our parents. And we get up for maybe about 12 or 13 years old, and we love a boy, you know. That's a different kind of love. Then you get another about 19 or 20. You want to love the guy that you're going to marry. You love him. And uh, then when you marry and you have children, you love them again. You love your parents. All kinds of love. But those loves, you know, if you're not very careful, you lose them. Because, you know, the husband, he may go astray. You lost him. Um, the wife may go astray. You lost her. Your children disappoint you. You know, you don't know where to find them. So sometimes you feel all alone. But there's Almighty God always there with his arms stretched out to say, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you it. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I'm meek and low. And I'll give rest for your soul. Isn't that good? Then you can rest in his arms. And just think about it. He loves me. Hug yourself. That's one. That's the kind of love that we want and that we need and always will have when we love him. So I know that I don't have to worry about you because you're going to stay with God. That's good. And his grace, his mercy, his grace. I know all of you know what grace is. Grace is God's unmerited faith. Grace is the opposite of what we deserve. Mm -hmm. Grace is something that you wonder, why did he give us, why did, why did God give uh, Jesus Christ, why did he have so much grace for us? You know, we didn't deserve it. We deserve to die. After Adam, we weren't supposed to have no grace. But God saw so much mercy for us and Thank looked out you. at his creation mm -hmm. and said, I'm not going to let him go to the heart. Mm -hmm. Even though he was upset with man sometimes, and you thought he had turned his back, he did. As, as you know, you read uh, 404 years. That's right. He would not listen to no prayers, nor anything mm -hmm. for man. Mm -hmm. He regretted he had made him because he was so sinful. Mm -hmm. He was so outright. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. But anyway, uh, his grace absolutely stayed with me. And I used to hear my husband say what God said. Now, we don't know what God said, but anyway, he was saying. When Moses was going down into Egypt, he told him to go down there and tell the people he had heard their cry. But they were still begging. They were still calling on the name of the Lord. Because they didn't realize that God had heard them. But when Moses went down there, he was out to prove that God would do what he said he would do. But we are so different until we believe the things that we can see and not the things that we cannot see. But anyways, I'm talking I was talking about grace, which is God's unmerited favor, I said that. And we it, we got we get the just the opposite of what we deserve. And the point is, is that his grace is always, always there. Mm -hmm. And we used to sing old hymn. Uh, I'm not talking about amazing grace, because that's still all over. Whenever it's a funeral or whatever, you know that you're going to hear amazing grace. And grace is amazing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it's amazing what grace has done in our lives and what it will continue to do as long as we breathe it. As long as we are here, we have God's grace. Amen. And that is one of the things that will keep us. Love and grace, that's still a part of our salvation. 
never let it go. Amen. The goodness also is involved in that. And you'll find that in Romans 12, um, in the 21st chapter. Goodness. There's no goodness in us. Some people, we call them good by nature better than we are by practice. But that's because maybe they got two or three dollars they'll give you. They were so good. They gave me a, a meal. They gave me a, a few dollars. And so we call them good. But we don't know the reason why that maybe they gave us a few dollars. They could have gave it to us because they wanted to be patted on the back. They may have given it to us because they could tell their neighbor what they did. So most of the time when people doing good for you. You look and see what the motive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there can be a motive. Sometimes there's not a motive. But whatever, most of the time people don't even worry about it as long as they are on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. But we should always think about whatever God gives us, out of, and it's always his goodness, what can we do for God? Amen. Mm -hmm. The little things that we do for God, and we think they are huge, that's not it. A drop in the bucket mm -hmm. of what we really think about that yeah. we could give him. Yeah. And actually what we really owe him. Wow. But he gave it to us free. Mm -hmm. And he said, your debt has been paid. Mm -hmm. You don't owe us, you don't owe me anything. Mm -hmm. All you owe me is, is the respect and to stand with me and to Amen. love him and all Amen. And that's what he wants from us. Yes. Is to love one another. Amen. He made us all in the same image. Amen. So let us love one another. We used to sing that. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is of God and he that loveth knoweth God. Amen. He that knoweth not knoweth not God. For God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. Amen. Can we say we love one another? Amen. A lot of times we love one another as long as that person is doing what we want them to do. All right. Oh, yeah. But when they stop doing that, we don't love them anymore. That's right. right. And we just, some of us are so bold, we'll say, honey, I used to like her, but I don't like her no more. Well, what did she do? Oh, child, you ain't been around her lately, have you? Well, you know. <laughs> I shiver. <laughs> I shiver at what you God think about you. Oh, you like you. Oh, thank you. I will do that. But that's the point I'm making today. Yeah. Love unconditionally. That's the love that God has. Do we have the ungodly love or do we have the godly love? Godly. Oh, I have some say, I heard one person say I have the godly love. Did that help to me, Pastor? Thank you. Put it in my mouth. Oh, my. I hear some laughing. You know I love the Lord. Amen. Amen. But there are times I say, Lord, did I miss my calling? Because you know I'm such a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering today how many was going to take me serious. <laughs> I am serious. Amen. I do love you. I love each and every one of you. And you know, I can really actually tell you the truth. Some people are not easy to love. I know. So I always have a pop out there. You know, I'm so glad that God told me that I didn't have to like everybody. I had to love everybody, but I didn't have to like everybody. <laughs> I'm so glad that that's not one of the ten. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> At least I think I do. <laughs> but no, I really don't. 
the unmerited favor. Amen. That's what God wants from us. He wants Amen. that to love. And I did look up all the name, different names of the, the love, but God has the agape love. Yes. That love, it's not, it, it can't be matched with any other love. That's right. And that's what God wants us. That's the kind of love He wants us to have for one another. Yes. And through Jesus Christ, if God gave that kind of love, through Jesus, we can have that kind of love. Amen. But some of the world look at us and they wonder where our love is. But some of them are better by nature than we are by practice. Mm -hmm. So we wonder about that love. That's a good word. We wonder about it. Do we really love as we are? We love people as long as they're doing what we want them to do. But once they don't do what we want them to do, the way we look at it, then we do. Honey, I can look, I can turn my love off like a faucet. <laughs> Just like you turn your water off, I can turn my love off. Oh, you're saying that to be brave or to brag about it? That's not good. Love your enemies, he said. Right. Love those that despitefully use you. When you are able to do all those things, you don't have to worry whether you are saved or not. You don't have to go home and wonder whether you belong to God. Because when you reach that area in your life, you'll know that you are a child of the Most High God. Amen. And you don't want to be anywhere else but with Him. Amen. And that's His grace, unmerited faith. And God is good. All the time. All the time. God. You'll find that in Romans 12, 21. God is good because he gave his only son mm -hmm. to die mm -hmm. and to suffer in our stead. That really belonged to us. Mm -hmm. But he allowed his son to take it off so that we wouldn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have to. So salvation is free, but it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. Right. So don't ever think of it as cheap. The price that he paid, nobody else can pay. So when you think about all the things that has been done for you through salvation, you can't love God enough. You can't thank him enough. You can't do enough to please him. Because it's all so good. And yet he puts no demands on you. Mm. His word is there for us to read and to be obedient to it and to do it. And it's not hard because if you desire to do it, he's there to help you. Not to hinder you, to help you. And he is a helper in the time of need. Mm. How many ever need him, God, and he turned his back? No. He's not going to do that. Maybe we would. I remember when she did such and such thing to me, so I'm going to get her back. You know? <laughs> That's the nature of us. But let's have the nature of God. Amen. And some of us sometimes when we stray away from God, we wonder, do we have to come again as a new creature in Him? No. The last thing I want to talk about is the assurance. The assurance that you belong to him. And he said he was married to the backslider. Amen. So you don't have to go back again and start all over again. You have to ask for forgiveness. And he is a forgiving God. Amen. He will forgive you. And he will assure you yes. that you still belong to him. Amen. Because Christ Jesus paid that price. And sometimes I lay in my bed and I think about them talking. And I'll say, Jesus may say to God, what about anyone? And God will say, you know, she's, she did such and such a thing. And I don't know whether we should do this or not. 
And then Jesus would say, but look at the price I paid for her. And God would say, yes, she deserves another chance. And I started crying. Oh my God, he loves me. <laughs> he loves me so much until he died for me. And he's still at the right hand of God talking to him about me. Amen. And waiting. I'll never be worthy, but he's waiting that I will, when one day that I meet him, and he'll say, well done. And I'll say, oh Lord, what did I do? And he'll start maybe naming the things that I did mm -hmm. that I forgot. Mm -hmm. And they're all good mm -hmm. because he has wiped away the bad things that I did. Mm -hmm. the things that he because I ask him to. Amen. And I think about that. And that's the assurance that I have. And the assurance that I want every one of you to have today, that you belong to God and nothing will turn you away from Him. God bless you. This is so great. My mom looking at camera and tell all your friends there in Detroit, I want you to tell them hello because you did an awesome, extraordinary job ministering here at Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte. So some of your friends, I know if you start naming, you're going to get in trouble. So don't name any of them. But you can say to the family, of course I can, Caroline and all of the kids, all of your wonderful kids there that's in Arizona and Detroit, you can tell them hello because we're going to air this to the world because we are so proud of the word that you gave us today about salvation, mm -hmm. to know that God is married to the back yeah. life, and God is married to us, and that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, and we know that God is for us, and if God be for us, everybody else might as well be. Yeah. So mom, just look at that wonderful camera and wave at all your friends and tell them hello. Yeah. Amen. Hello, and, uh, hello everybody. Amen. And please get everything ready, because we're going to teach and preach again. Not me, but this time I think you guys should take it over, okay? God bless all of you that you. I think what we'll do is we'll have a series. It'll be called Annie Walker's Series <laughs> on Salvation. Amen. Right. And we'll be coming Amen. to you and broadcasting to you. So those who are watching by way of this media ministry, we say thank you for tuning in and uh, hearing my wonderful mom, Annie Walker. Give her the biggest God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>